Today we're turning pallet wood. Wait, can you even do that? So one of the key things that I like to do is run the boards through the planer. Make sure they're very flat. And in the gluing process, I want to put plenty of glue. I want to make sure I also put some glue in the cracks. Put those boards in there. Make sure they're as even as possible. And clamp it all up. Gaps are basically your enemy. Here's one of the things you need to know about wood turning. If you're going to be gluing boards together, you got to make sure to always make sure that there are no gaps. So if I take two boards that are both very nicely planed, very flat, and I put in some glue. Well, those boards are flat. There's no gaps. Everything's good. Now, the other thing you need to know is that you can have boards that are not completely flat on one end. As long as the part that you glue is flat. So you can get some gluing surface that will you know, have no gaps. It's okay if the other end is curved. So again, you're fine. But if you get some irregular boards on the inside where the glue is, that is actually very dangerous. So in the case of this board, if I have a warped board, when I start turning, my chisel, my gouge, is going to remove some material. Once I hit the gap, then I'm basically going to have a wood explosion on my hands. That's very bad. So because of this, I run my boards through the planer. If you look at the boards very carefully here, you can tell that they're not planed equal. It's because the first thing that the planer will remove are actually the high spots. These are the spots that will create the gaps. So I prefer to run them through until I get to clean wood, but it's completely up to you. So once everything is completely clamped up and tight, I'll just put it away and leave it to dry for a day or two. Once that's done, I get the trusty old cutting tool out and cut off a piece. And I do a reasonable effort to make sure that the side is reasonably square. get ready to mount it on the lathe. Once everything's good there, and it goes. Tailstock comes in, presses up against it, lock in the tailstock, and then make sure that you push that tailstock all the way inside so you get some good pressure and lock that in as well. And do a quick test to see what are the vibrations like. Here I have pretty well centered so we're just gonna go ahead. Make sure that my banjo clears the piece and once that's the case and I'm comfortable with it give it a last little spin and check. Put on my protection start taking off some uh, some layers of wood every now and then I like to check just to see on my progress this is pallet wood and it's also the first time that I turn pallet wood on the lathe and I also know that we have those gaps in certain areas so you want to watch out for those and you want to check on those gaps every now and then to at least know that that's where the tool can catch. So you can see here I'm 
pointing out some of the gaps and we have a big one right over here so here I've been smoothing it out making it as circular as possible still not quite done I like to take my time pallet wood is extremely dry most turners will tell you that they like to turn, you know, wet wood, semi-wet, some will tell you dry wood, but pallet wood is always going to be dry. So you got to understand this and be ready for it. I like to put the tool on top of the piece every now and then and if the tool jumps I know that I don't have a perfectly cylindrical shape yet. At this point though everything's very nice and round so I cranked up the speed and then started to do some experimentation. I do have a piece here that can fly off at the end so I made sure to make that side a little bit slimmer so that I can remove the gap. And then just play around, see what I can do, experiment, put some patterns. I'm a bit of an amateur when it comes to wood turning, but this is something that I've always wanted to try. Beautiful, isn't it? Is it? bit of a catch there on the left side of the screen you can see it's at an angle so I'm gonna have to turn that out if I can get the banjo in there there we go it's amazing once you go to the higher speeds how much material you can remove Here I basically make all the pieces mostly flat. And now I'm going to remove the banjo so I can start the sanding process. Here I did a little bit of a mistake. What I did is that I sanded at high speed. I've learned now that it's better to sand at low speed. While you may assume that at higher speed you're going to get smoother wood, what's going to happen is that the sandpaper is not going to be as effective at higher speed. So you want to take the speed down. Still this thing is absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to do a little bit more sanding because obviously through my inexperience I was running into some issues. And at this point, I got really curious. I wanted to know just what is this wood going to look like with some different finishes. And obviously, it was also very smooth. So what I did is that I actually took, first of all, a little bit of the shavings and used one of the tricks to basically use the shavings to make the wood a little bit more glossy. It kind of gave it an interesting little finish, but I wasn't completely happy with it. I didn't see that much of a difference. So out of curiosity, the next thing that I did was to take a brush with water and basically just make the wood wet, which would have the effect of making those colors really pop out. This thing is absolutely awesome as far as the colors are concerned. Now I still need to work on my technique, but I think you'll agree that this experiment is a success. Don't forget to subscribe.